Godspeed your level up. Hey babes, and welcome back to Feminine Financial Freedom. My name is Jazz, and today's video is all about eight practical, everyday time management tips for you to Godspeed your level up. Now, what do I mean, and why am I so excited about it? I'm so excited about it because I am literally witnessing, ever since I've started implementing all these tips at once, the, the level up has just, I mean, it's been Godspeed. It's literally been Godspeed. So I'm so excited to share these tips that I have with y'all. I've done these tips over time, little by little, or periodically, individually, but there's something about doing all eight of these tips I'm gonna give you babes today. I don't know, this combination is crazy. So let's get right into it. But what do I mean when I say level up? What is going on in your level up journey is personal to you. you. You can be going through a physical level up journey where you're focusing on your skin, your fitness, your weight. You go through a mental level level up where you are really focusing on learning more, increasing your skills, increasing your knowledge. Maybe you're going back to school. You could be having a career level up right now where you're really focusing on getting certified in certain things or maybe your career shifting or completely starting a new business. You could be going through a spiritual level up right now which is super personal and individual to everyone. But regardless of what area of your life you're focusing on leveling up in, these time management tips are going to make space for that like never before. And the last tip I have for you guys is a little controversial, but stay to the end so you don't miss out because this is something that I really feel like since I've added to my life, it's been the glue that's holding everything together for me. And I believe that it is imperative to speeding up your level up. So enough talking, let's get started with tip number one. Tip number one is wake up early. Stop fighting it. I know you're here all the time. I know you're trying to find ways around it. Oh, why do I have to wake up at five? Why can't it be six? Because it has to be five, okay? If you're a night owl, this is gonna be extremely difficult for you. I personally am a morning person, but even I have decided to wake up even an hour earlier than my previous level ups have required me to do. So my new morning routine starts at 4 a.m. Yes, 4 a.m. And I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm absolutely loving it. The amount of work that I get done before lunchtime is insane. And I absolutely love it. I love it being 11 a.m. and sunny. Almost all my to-do list is done and I have a lot of the day and the evening to play and do what I wanna do. I absolutely love that feeling of getting all of my heavy duty work done in the morning and it has sped up my level up like never before. And just that one hour for me, waking up one hour earlier has done so much for me. You need to know your strengths and your weaknesses when it comes to waking up early. So whether you're a morning person or not, wake up early. But as far as what you're doing in the morning, that's where your strengths and weaknesses come in and knowing yourself comes into play. So if you have a lot of mental energy in the morning, like me, then get your heavy duty mental work done. Personally, like to get up and start working. I get up and I start doing my social media management. I start planning my videos. I start working on my online businesses. I start getting my investments ready for the day. I start doing all of my mental work, anything that has to do with calculations or brainstorming. I do that first thing when I wake up because I know myself and I know that I personally am the most mentally clear and sound and productive in the morning. Now you may have more physical energy energy in the morning. And if you do, that's perfectly fine. Get that physical work done in the morning. So whether that's going to the gym or whether that's running errands where you're using your body a lot and you're moving and going and ripping and running, make sure that your to-do list is set up in a way that gets all your physical stuff out of the way first. Early bird catches the worm. Now what your worm is, is going to be dependent on what your strengths are. And another huge tip that I have that is kind of a sub tip of waking up early is to do the hardest thing first. So eat the frog first. That's another saying. Whatever is the thing that's on your to-do list that is that drains your mind mentally when you think about doing it. It's just a task that you don't like to do, but you know you have to do it. It's something you cannot delegate. It's something that has to be done by you. Do it first. Get out the way. Do it first. Now there are cases where you're not going to be able to eat the frog first. Like let's say your frog of the day is an oil change. Well, the oil change place doesn't open till 9 a.m. And if you're waking up at 5 a.m., you're gonna have to wait till nine to get it done. So there's gonna be certain things that you're not gonna be able to knock it off right up front in the morning like that. But if it is something that you can do in the morning, go ahead and do it in the morning. Like if you know you gotta deep clean your bathroom, you're dreading doing that, just do it in the morning. Just first thing in the morning, just do it. Rest of the day, 
work on the rest of your to-do list. Tip number two is utilize the quadrant method. I'll put the quadrant method up on the screen here. And what this method is, is where you split up your task into four quadrants. And the four quadrants are gonna be categorized like this. Your columns are gonna be labeled urgent and not urgent. And your rows are gonna be labeled important and not important. And that's gonna get you four boxes. Now you wanna put your tasks in those four boxes and you do it like this. So basically if it goes into the urgent and important box, do it. That's one of those frog things. You just, you have to do it, just do it. Now if it goes into the not urgent but important quadrant, then schedule it. It's still a priority, but it doesn't have to be done right away. So schedule that. That third box is gonna hold your urgent but not important tasks. And those are things that you need to consider delegating. Now delegating is such a, I don't know, delegating makes you feel so bougie. Like, ooh, I get to delegate. Like, you feel like, okay, I get to delegate. But, and so it may seem a little crazy, whatever, but there are so many different ways you can delegate, y'all. It's not in the typical ways that you think of, of like having to hire an assistant and, hey, can you have your people call my people? No, it's not that type of way. You can delegate in so many different ways nowadays with so many different services and apps that are available for busy people because people nowadays are busy. So it could be something as simple as delegating your laundry. There's laundry services that'll come by, pick up your laundry, and then drop it back off to you cleaned and folded for you, okay? So if you know that not only does laundry take you all day to do, but you usually have to be home all day to do it, and it's a task. And if that's something that's not important that you do, but it's urgent that it gets done, delegate it. Your best asset is time. So anything that can give you some time back and it doesn't cost that much to do it, Pay for convenience. When you're on your level up journey, you will start to realize that paying for convenience is worth it. It's very much worth it. <laughs> and then last but not least with the quadrant method, you have that last box, which is gonna hold anything that is not important and not urgent. And you'd be surprised at how many things you can put in that box. And anything that can get put in that box, eliminate it, eliminate it. Don't even worry about it. Speaking of not worrying about it, that kind of leads me into point number three. Tip number three is to brain dump slash capture your thoughts immediately. So I don't know if I have ADHD or what, but I always have open tabs going on in my mind. And so I have to do this. This is something that I've had to do all of my adult life. I think even when I was a teenager, I had to do this. Like literally if I don't do this, I can't function. So for me, it's a non-negotiable, but if this is something that you have not implemented in your life, Girl, start implementing this in your life. Basically what this means, brain dump, capture your thoughts, is whenever you have a thought come up, write it down. I am old school and I'm still using handy dandy trusty dusty Apple Notes. It's embarrassing how many things I have in my notes. I have so many things in my notes app that it's running slow. It's slow to scroll because it's just so full of everything. I mean, I write down everything. I write down my ideas. I write down my to-dos. Even things as simple as I need to text this person back. Yes, I even have to write down because I will forget. And another thing that has to do with forgetting or thinking you may forget about something is you having to remember to remember takes up a lot of mental real estate. When it comes to your mental real estate, it is sacred. Do not clutter that space. Whatever's in there, get it out so that you can forget about it because it's written down somewhere that you can go back and refer to. There are so many things that I write down and just put in my notes that if at the end of the day, I would have spent the day trying to remember these things, I would have not remembered these things. <laughs> People wouldn't have got phone calls, the appointments wouldn't have been made, that video idea that I came up with in the shower wouldn't have got scripted. Like there's so many things that go on in your head in a daily basis, capture those. Capture those thoughts so you can do it physically, write in a notebook. It frees up so much mental space. It's tip number four is to stop multitasking. I know, as women, this is one of our skills. We are very skilled at multitasking. We can juggle a lot of things at one time. I wouldn't say with ease, but with more ease than our counterparts. However, just because you're good at something doesn't mean you should be doing it all the time. If you want to Godspeed your level up, we need to start focus working. And my favorite way to get focused nowadays is time blocks. I've been loving time blocks. Me and time blocks. How do you shake your own hand? <laughs> like, we like this, okay? And I'm talking about time blocks. Phone on D&D, &D, timer set, deadline, alarm. I mean, I am blocking out the time. For example, right now, it is 10.30 a.m. in Hawaii. I have reserved this filming room 
from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Guess what she's doing? She's filming from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's what I'm doing. I have time blocked these four hours to do that. So no matter what happens in these four hours, it gotta wait. This is my time block to film. If I get done early, which I never do, because <laughs> I be talking, as you can see in this video. If I do get done early, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sit in here and I'm gonna film some more, because I got more content that could have been filmed next week that I could film this week if I get done early. Either way it goes, I'm using up my entire time block for what it was designated for. And time blocks do not only have to be used for your business or work, it can be used for your tasks. If you know you need to do a whole house clean, time block it. If you give yourself only an hour to clean your house, you're gonna clean that house in an hour. But if you give yourself the whole day, it's gonna take the whole day. So when you time block and you give yourself deadlines, you'd be surprised at how you can make things shake when you've given yourself a deadline. Tip number five is plan your day the night before. Such a huge tip because essentially what this does is it makes sure that you are spending your day doing instead of spending your day planning on what to do. This also has to do with decluttering your mind and clearing up your mental real estate because your day needs to be as productive as possible. And then at the end of your day, at the end of the day, <laughs> when you are laying in bed, swap scrolling social media for planning your day. That's what I do. I, I can't spend my day planning. I'll spend a lot of time planning, but I will spend an hour at night laying in bed planning. That is how I put myself to sleep. And I sleep really good knowing that the next day is completely planned and organized for me. Sorry, money's, money's calling, literally. <laughs> money's calling. One second. I had everything on D&D except for this notification, okay? Not bad. Tip number six is to use your time commuting wisely. Now, I used to live in Dallas, Texas for a little bit. And when I lived in Dallas, one of the first things I did once I realized just how close I was to everything, and I also had met a friend out there who did this, and she honestly inspired me. And then at the time, it was a lot cheaper. Now, not so much. She used Lyft to get everywhere. She didn't have a car, so she couldn't afford it. It just made more sense. She was saving money on car insurance, saving money on gas, saving money on a car note, saving money on maintenance, saving money on parking deck fees, and she worked from home. So it made economical sense for her to not have a car. She lifted everywhere. She had a little cart that she would bring when she would do grocery shopping, and then she also would get groceries delivered to her place. So it made a lot of sense to use Lyft to get everywhere. I decided to sell my car, and I started lifting everywhere. Now, not only did I really enjoy being passenger princess, or I guess backseat princess, because um, I hate driving, I realized that I was actually able to get a lot done when I wasn't in charge of driving. This is something that I think that people should utilize more when they are commuting somewhere and they're not in the driver's seat. You can get a lot done by being in the passenger seat, being in the back seat, you can get phone calls done. A lot of work nowadays can be done on your phone. You can get phone work done. You can make phone calls. You can do appointments. You can do a lot of just little tasks from your phone or you can even have your laptop open back there and get a lot done when you're not driving so that that time that you're using to commute somewhere is not wasted. I know you can wanna use it to like chit chat and talk about nothing or listen to music about nothing, but during your level up, you need to be figuring out ways and spaces in your life where you can be more productive. If you spend 30 minutes commuting somewhere, 30 minutes back, and you are going two, three places a day, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of time spent that you could be spending either doing work, even listening to an audiobook. That's more productive, right? Listening to informational YouTube videos. I, that's my favorite way to learn. I love listening to YouTube videos. And also when you are waiting, like if you're in a waiting room or in a line instead of scrolling social media, when you are listening to audio content, make sure you are listening to it on 1.25 speed. This is a little hack that speeds up your level up. It gets the content in your brain 25% faster. Doesn't seem like a lot, but if you've read Atomic Habits, you know these little habits and these little things add up over time. This is something that can compound your level up journey. I have gotten so many things done since I've implemented this about, I think a year ago, I started watching everything on 1.25 speed. Everything, everything. And the amount of content, informational, educational, 
content and audiobooks that I've been able to consume just by increasing the speed by 25% has been huge. Tip number seven, choose only one day or one night a week to poison your body. I phrased it that way for a reason and I'm not gonna take it back. It's poison and y'all know exactly what I'm talking about, alcohol. If you must drink alcohol, choose one day to poison your body. And the older you get, <laughs> the more you realize you can only handle one day. But if you just have to, if you went on a social event, you just got peer pressure, it's peer pressure. When you go somewhere and you went with intention to not drink and you end up drinking just because everyone else was drinking, that is peer pressure, babe. You have been peer pressured, you have been influenced. It is what it is, let's work on that. But until you work on that completely, choose only one day a week to do that. Your body will thank you, your mind will thank you, your future self will thank you. And tip number eight, which is the last tip I have for y'all, thank you for staying with me this far. Like I said in the beginning, it's a little controversial, but if you can do this, baby, your level up is going to be Godspeed. I need you to come a little closer for this one, okay? Stop dating. Stop dating, stop taking men seriously, and stop making I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, if you're married, just skip this part because you don't put yourself in an obligation, right? If you are single, baby, stop dating. The only exception to this rule is if that man is directly, come in, directly contributing to your level up. How I was explaining how your level up is personal, if that man is directly funding helping, providing, assisting with your level up. Make room for that man. If he's not, there's no space for you, babes. I'm sorry. There's no space, there's no room. There's no room, there's no room. As women, we will find space where there is no space. We will make time when there is no time. All of the potential or the fear of missing out on a good man, Savannah. Stop it. This is your time to be selfish. The money, the time, the energy, the mental space, and the headache that comes with dating cannot be in your schedule. It just cannot be in your schedule. If you want to Godspeed your level up, implement this last tip. Stop dating. It's only been a few months for me, and y'all, I mean, I know you see it. I know you see the glow, okay? I know you see how happy I am. <laughs> it's so it's so crazy how this one thing, like I said, I've done all of these tips little by little over the years, but something about adding in this last tip in combination with the other seven, I feel like I've grown more in these last few months than I have in the last two years. Yeah, I, th I really think it's because not dating is something that I've never done before, but I love it. Oh my gosh, it's been amazing. It's been the best decision that I could have ever made for my life. So I really, really, really encourage all my single babes out there to understand what a blessing, what a blessing it is to be single and leveling up. You need this time for you. This is your selfish time, this is your selfish era. Your future self is gonna thank you for postponing such a, such a thing. It's not even, it's insignificant to your goals, okay? If you can do that, I'm telling you, Godspeed. Those are my eight time management tips on how to Godspeed your level up. If you found these tips valuable, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and I will see you in my next video.